Shalom Kharim, I'm Stephen ben -Nun. you're watching Israeli News Live, and I just wanted to share a couple of things with you guys. Uh, we did a little traveling uh, during the Thanksgiving holiday. First, wish everybody a uh, happy Thanksgiving. I know it's already passed yesterday, but uh, hopefully you guys got a chance to spend some time with family, and, uh, and we want to thank you for your prayers, your support, and kindness to this ministry, uh, but also... We want to keep you in the loop of things that are going on even while we're traveling here. I'll actually be teaching later this evening uh, here on Israeli News Live. We're going to do some type of uh, Shabbat program. I don't know if I can run it live because I am uh, where I'm at, where I end up coming to each time. Uh, my dad's, it's of course out a little bit in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> I was looking at some different uh, stories that are going on right now. Not to say it's all of them, but. Uh, uh, once again, the U.S. is abandoning the idea of regime change in Syria, says uh, on uh, FRN News, Fort Russ, uh, dot com, that uh, <clears throat> the replacement of the current Syrian administration is not among U.S. aims in the Middle East because the country is committed to the process of a political settlement. The special representative of the U.S. Secretary of State, Syria, James Jeffrey, told RIA Novosti, uh, on the Commerçant newspaper. And isn't it weird how they just keep changing back and forth? Uh, and I think Assad probably will go in the near future. Maybe Russia's trying to coordinate that, but to make sure that they have some control. But at the same time, I keep in mind that I still think there's going to be a military intervention uh, inside of Syria, especially as this battle for Idlib begins. And when the battle of Idlib begins, it's not going to be a good situation at all, friends. Uh, also, the United States uh, uh, over in, I think, what was it, Oklahoma, F-35s, uh, RT's reporting about 35 of the F-35s uh, were displayed in a swarm of fighter jets on the runway there, and then they took off just seconds apart, showing their uh, incredible ability. Actually, Utah, the Air Force Base in Utah is where this happened at. Um, you might want to check that out. It's kind of a cool-looking uh, picture that they have, and showing them uh, in time lapse uh, taking off from the base and stuff. It's kind of interesting to see the firepower. Russia has been ranked number three in the world as far as military. Of course, Russia is denying that the ranking is accurate because they said they don't take into consideration a lot of the facts, but Russia is also claiming that they are uh, helping to keep the globalism in check. But, you know, I think the New World Order is played by Russia as well. It doesn't make any difference who's in, who's out there in these world leaders here. They're all part of the New World Order. Russia is no different. Russia is not the country it was back during the days of the Tsars uh, when, when Christianity flourished in the country, but later by the Bolsheviks was totally suppressed. Uh, also, another one that I thought was interesting, India purchases a, purchases of sanctioned Iranian crude to eclipse last year's level. Looks like India really doesn't care what Donald Trump says about sanctions, and they show a picture of a huge freighter off of India's coast there, uh, getting the oil pumped up into the country. Uh, speaking of oil and the uh, the pipeline that's going in inside of Israel and also under the sea headed towards Europe, uh, I continue to get some things I'll share with you later. I just need to make sure I have permission to do so first from a good friend of mine in Israel that's sharing with me uh, who works on the project. He's a manager there. Uh, he shares some images with me of the building of the pipeline. And I think that's very interesting because, as I said, <clears throat> it tells us with China's involvement in Israel that the New World Order is definitely uh, chosen the United States back pipeline plan and the Turk stream, as they call it, the one that Russia is working on with Turkey. Uh, again, that's really NATO control. Doesn't matter in this case who gets it when it comes to that. And, and whether or not Russia is really aware of that or are they just playing the part, it's kind of hard to say. Eh, we'll just have to wait and see. Also, I want to remind you guys, uh, listen, don't forget we have this conference coming up in Kansas on December 1st of 2018 and December 2nd. Uh, it's only seven days away, 22 hours, roughly about eight days, I guess, in that regards there. It's next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend. And uh, uh, we have on, on IsraeliNewsLive.org, if you go, instead of clicking on the actual link 
at the top of the page, if you, if you scroll down on the website and you see the Kansas conference, we put the itinerary in there. Uh, now, it actually begins on Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Yana will be speaking first on 5G. Uh, from 2.30 to 4 p.m., Dr. Steve Pigeon will be speaking on Mamzer, uh, why leadership is what it is. And, uh, and then I will speak at 4 to 5.30 uh, on that Saturday there, Yom Shabbat, uh, and that'll be about my seven-year experience with the CIA, uh, the intelligence community. And then, of course, we go into the schedule for Sunday, Yom Rishon, uh, from 9 a.m. to 10.30, Dr. Pigeon will be speaking on the political history of the Vatican over the U.S. Uh, I will follow in with the Jesuit infiltration of the churches, leading the nation to a new world order. And, and, and I'm not just talking about speaking about things that you see on the Internet. I'm talking about direct contact with those Jesuits that are involved in moving even President Donald Trump in the direction that he's going in. Uh, and that's whether he knows it or not. I'll just say that. And uh, I'll be going into the involvement of some of these uh, major uh, religious institutions in the United States and money laundering, drugs, etc. That's also backing uh, the, the very movements of supplying weapons and things like that to the jihadists in the Middle East. Uh, so also then we'll break for lunch and then after lunch at 3.30 p.m. Yana will be speaking on Israel has been hijacked. Uh, and then I'll end up at the bottom. Who are the Zionists working with to manufacture a millennial reign? That ought to be really thought provoking when you find that out. And you have to understand, we are here to support the real Jewish people. Those Jews, the real Hebrews, I should say, the 12 tribes of Israel, that remnant that God is calling out around the world. And he does have a remnant in the modern state of Israel as well. Just like I said 2,000 years ago, what side would you have been on? Because today it's set up the same way. Today there are Israeli believers that are in threat of losing their citizenship unless they're part of the cabal. You do have some Israelis that claim to be uh, Christians that, well, they must be Catholic. <laughs> You know, I don't know, but the thing is, I have too many Israeli friends that are believers that tell me, don't dare tell anybody that I believe in Yeshua because I'll be thrown out. The Hyde family, they were right here on Israeli News Live. They shared their testimony, their citizenship in danger of being revoked, the government constantly trying to revoke them. So those that are not in danger, you know they're working with the Zionist elite. And believe me, I know all about that. So I'll be sharing those things with you. So, hey, you want to stand with the, with the Jewish people in Israel? Stand with the ones that were like the apostles when they won the believers back 2,000 years ago. Who was crushing them? Yeah, the Romans. The Romans and the Zionists of that day, the Pharisees, were crushing the true believers. What side would you have taken? Because today you're living in the same day. Are you going to stand with the Sanhedrin? Uh, you know, they have a modern-day Sanhedrin today, and believe me, they hate the true believers. Uh, do you want the Noahide laws? Well, it's going to be all over the world. At any rate, uh, so, you know, we have, the, we have the itinerary there, but again, it's on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, under the Kansas Conference, December 1st and 2nd, like I said, a week away. But you go at the top where it says Upcoming Conference, learn more at our conference website. Click on that for more information That'll give you the ability to register. It says right there on the picture in the middle of the website, reserve tickets, um, and you can get your tickets because, uh, believe me, you're not going to want to miss this. And uh, if you're wanting to come, and we do have some uh, seats reserved for those that want to come but are financially not capable of affording a ticket, all you need to do is email us, and we will work with you uh, if you're wanting to come, but you are limited financially. We have we always set aside tickets like that for every conference because we want people to be able to come. What we do in, in charging for this conference, though, is help to cover the cost because it's expensive. Uh, you know, the, everyone is coming in, flying in, or driving in, whichever the case may be. Uh, and so, and plus the cost of the venue, et cetera, it's the only way we, to make sure we can cover those costs there, uh, or at least try to, at any rate. I'm Steve Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for tuning in, and Shalom Shalom.